Hebrews 12, 15. This is a very good scripture that really shows us the, the problem that resentment can be if we don't catch it early. Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another. To see that no one falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing, in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment, and many become contaminated and defiled by it. I love that scripture. He's saying, look, if, if you let, like, like for example, I was bitter and resentful and had all kinds of bad attitudes because my father had sexually abused me. Well, a lot of them were just buried down deep in me and they were affecting my relationships, affecting my attitudes, affecting the way I thought. They were affecting every area of my life. But you see, I thought because I left home when I was 18 that I didn't have the problem anymore. But the thing was, I took the problem with me in my soul. And so there's an inner work that needs to be done in us that only Jesus can do. Well, because I had that root of resentment in my life, that was affecting my marriage. It was affecting my children. It was affecting all my relationships. It was affecting my daily life. So just like this scripture says, if you don't get it stopped, it's going to just spread. And it's going to affect every area of your life. And some of you, if you really will take to heart what I'm saying this morning, this can be life changing for you. Don't live your life bitter and resentful and full of hatred and bitterness over something that happened to you that you cannot do anything about, but God can if you'll let him do it. Yeah. Now, the Bible actually tells us, God had the audacity to tell us that trials actually are good for us and we should get excited about them. It's amazing how spiritual we can be when everything's good and how we can resurrect that old man when things aren't so good. God wants us to be stable. Stable, stable, stable. I'm going to talk about stability for a minute. I was so unstable in the earlier years of my life. I never knew how I was going to behave till the devil told me. If he said I was depressed, I was depressed. If he said I was mad, I was mad. I didn't know anything at all about controlling my emotions. I just did whatever I felt like doing. Well, you know, emotions can be good sometimes, but they can really be dangerous because you never know when they're going to come and when they're going to go. And you have to make sure the right ones are guiding your life. i particularly fond of Psalm 94, 12, and 13. So let's take a look at that. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man whom you discipline and instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. Okay, so this is saying that when God is disciplining you, you are blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. That you may give him power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity until the inevitable pit of corruption is dug for the wicked. So this is saying God is going to continue to deal with us and deal with us and deal with us and deal with us. And part of that means that he is going to let you get in some uncomfortable situations that are going to bring hopefully the best out of you. But I don't know where you're at. I mean, the Bible says in James 1 that trials bring out patience. Well, they brought a lot of stuff out of me before we ever got to patience. <laughs> I mean, like nasty stuff. And it took about 25 years for me to get stable. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you are as slow as me, but it took me, oh, there's one lady, two. <laughs> got a few out there. You know, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. You'd think we could learn a little faster than what we do. If God gives you a test and you don't pass it, you get to take it again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Until you pass it. God will keep letting us 
deal with stuff and deal with stuff and deal with stuff. And these are not things that are going to, they don't even really get into the category of real suffering. I mean, these are just uncomfortable, irritating things. Just stuff, things that happen. People say something that hurts our feelings. We didn't get the promotion we wanted at work. We didn't get to sing in the choir, you know, whatever the case might be. My goodness, if we can't even deal with that kind of stuff, what are we going to do if things get really difficult? And he said, this is going to keep on uh, that you, that God would give us power to keep ourselves calm in the day of adversity. Everybody say, I have to learn to keep myself calm. <laughs> you didn't sound excited. I'd like you to do it again. <laughs> I have to learn to keep myself calm. Second Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 3. These are awesome scriptures. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate or endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing <laughs> and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. Verse 4, and they will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fiction. Verse 5, but as for you, now he's talking to Timothy, who's a preacher of the word. As for you, be calm and cool and steady. <laughs> And suffer unflinchingly every hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fully perform all the duties of your ministry. Now, here it really gets good. Verse 6, Paul says, For I am already about to be sacrificed. My life is about to be poured out as a drink offering. The time of my spirit's release from the body is at hand, and I will soon be free. I, well, I'm more excited about that than you are, I think. But, I mean, I get what he's saying. He's saying, look, being here in this earth, in the times we're living in, and trying to serve God in this fleshly body, it is not always easy. It's not always comfortable. It doesn't always feel good. But boy, the day is going to come when our job here will be done and we'll get a release from this body and we will be totally and completely free. And can I tell you something? That's when life begins. 